Finally, we had all made it to the lodge, but the sun was already coming up, so before we had a chance to rest, we were greeted by this group of gibbons. Since I wasn't getting any rest, what a better way to wake up than swimming in the brisk mountain water. Now is this an escape or what? Get the bug! David, get the bug! Well, we already found another snake. Nice. So, so we don't know what species it is, and that's really rare. They yeah, will like make it and make it in a break, yeah. but we'll bring it out and photograph it up there. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't lose it here. The snake turned out to be a black-headed colored snake, a snake that's popular among local herpetologists because of how difficult it is to find. Back at the lodge, we waited for night to fall and to get ready for another night of looking for animals. You'll see this stick right here. This is such an amazing stick. Because in fact, it's a slug eater. Which, if you see, it's camouflaged. You can see along this branch how easy it is to actually pass by the snake. And if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't know it's there. So the camouflage on these guys is amazing. They're a non-venomous snake, and it is a montane slug eater. So you can find these guys higher in elevation than their cousins. And we're out here on a cool, chilly night, and just to find it in situ, this is obviously not a stage shot, because he has got this whole thing wrapped up. And yeah, so we were just walking by and found him. Now here we got a forest dragon that again we found in situ and as you hold them for a, a while they get darker so he's starting to darken up already so I don't want to hold him for too long but I just wanted to show you guys this amazing looking forest dragon. Look at him. So this is how you know the difference between an in situ shot and a setup shot. I've been holding him for just a moment and look at how dark he's already gotten. So you, if you're gonna photo these guys in situ, that's where you're gonna get their nice natural green color. If you start holding them, they get really dark. Of all of the amphibians, one of the most intriguing is the Java Spadefoot Toad, because they can opt for an unconventional mode of travel. They walk. The next morning, it was time to leave and head to Bali. So we took our last photos and got ready to head down the mountain. What's up, frog? Oh, wow, okay, this one doesn't smell. That one smells. So we're walking four hours because we have one car that's low on oil and another one that's bottoming out on these tires with all the weight. Bye. So getting where you're going is hard. But if you're looking to get your reptile where it's going, you can trust reptiles to you to have a safe, secure trip and have customer service that is impeccable. So I guess the sign for hitchhacking isn't universal. <laughs> so if you want somebody that you can trust your reptile shipping with, go to reptilestoyou.com. All right, we, it's desperate times right now. We've been walking for like seven hours. Max is really getting hungry. This is the only food we've found so far. <laughs> uh, we're filming here where he's gonna eat it for the first time. Max, we're ready. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, we made it out of the hill, but we're down here and Daniel. Third flat tire for the trip. Are you ready to just get back on the road? We are, hopefully. Hopefully we don't get another flat tire because we don't have any more spares. We need to buy like a pack of spares. Do they sell them in six pack? I think uh, we, we should buy a 12 pack. A 12 pack. <laughs> this is just day three. Yeah, day three. We're oh. averaging one flat tire a day. <laughs> All right, so we're just about to go out for herping for King Cobras and 
Once again, we're almost dying. One of the guys that's with us got hit by a motorcycle, got lifted up in the air, and so he might be going to the hospital, and we are all... Just to um, like and subscribe. Just uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's it, that's it. So, we're about to go herping. We're about to go to the hospital, and uh, we're gonna figure tonight out. So, let's get to it. So I've got a couple, six long-tailed grass lizards. Look at these guys. They're just hanging out. They're super delicate, so I'm being uh, super easy with them. As you can see, they're able to move freely between my fingers. But uh, but yeah, these guys, you can find them by the hundreds. So we've got the white lip viper here, found here in Bogor. When it rains, you can find multiple of these guys just hanging out on the branch. In fact, it's been dry for a couple days and we already have found two, and so we're going back and forth photoing them. And if you see them out in their natural habitat, you're gonna see that they blend in so well, but when you hit them with that flashlight just right, they light up like a Christmas tree. One of my favorite snakes here in Indonesia, and such a pleasure to see. In Bogor's rice fields, a dramatic encounter awaited us. Walking between the saturated plots on thin pathways, we found something incredible, an Indonesian spitting cobra. As we moved the snake away from the workers in the field, the situation took an unexpected turn. Coming. While I was sinking in the rice field, Ongo was juggling two spitters. Coming. Spitter. Okay, that's worse. There we are. Keeping it easy on him. So here we have the Naja Esputatrix. And this is a spitting cobra. And you'll notice that I am wearing my glasses because she, she turns around and she wants to spit on me. My eyes, any cut I might have, will be an envenomation. And this is a hefty female. She is a big one. And we found two of these. And this is around people who are working in these rice fields and they're walking around on top of gra tall grass, on top of trash, and they're walking barefoot or in sandals. So these snakes, they're pretty dangerous. And we're gonna get a ton of shots of this one because it's just such an amazing animal. And I'm so happy that we found it out here in Indonesia. Well, it wouldn't be the jungle if it didn't rain. So we're under a canopy here at a bird sanctuary in the middle of the forest, in between trying to find these frogs. Well, it's a good thing that we're looking for amphibians right now because this rain's gonna really bring them all out. By far the best frog we found was this pearly tree frog a rare species that's found in high elevations. This one was gorgeous, and luckily for me, it was also super photogenic. So, if you look here, we have a Draco lizard, or a flying dragon. These guys are pretty cool. It is still raining out here, and just check out those wings. It's surprising how thin they are. It feels almost like a velvet fruit roll-up, like I could almost push my finger through. So wait a minute, I thought boigas were supposed to be black and yellow, but actually this rear fang snake here has a very interesting red coloration. And as you can see, it wants to climb, wants to crawl around. So they're pretty docile snakes, but they are rear fang venomous, so you shouldn't let them drop on your face. But yeah, typically when people think of boigas, they think of mangrove snakes, but we've been taking photos of him and trying to get that tongue action. But the thing about this guy, that we've noticed is that he's not sticking his tongue out unless he's moving. As you see, there's a lot of tongue action, but once he gets still, he stops using his tongue. Right on cue. But he starts moving again, and then the tongue starts moving around. But he's a very interesting snake, and just one that is so much fun to photograph. Next stop was Bali, where we stayed at an amazing lodge, saw the sights, visited the Hindu temples, and immediately started herping. 
It wasn't long before we found our first snake in Bali, which was this fantastic looking crate. This is not a snake you want to get bitten by. The mortality rate for untreated bites is around 60 to 70 percent. So in the course of 20 minutes, we found a crate, a bronze bag, a reticulated python, and two insularis. Indonesia is full of reptiles and oh. just the density here is mind-blowing. This one's very easy to see. This one's a little bit higher up. I'm just blown away. I'm so excited to see these guys out in the wild and they look amazing. So check this out, a wild reticulated python. These guys are so amazing and they are already so strong at this size. These must be taken on sizable prey, but the snake's gonna get so much bigger. So these retics, they are tough. If you notice, this one has an injury on top of his head. It's healing really well, but he's super iridescent and he's actually really chilled out. So I am super excited to have this snake being found. As amazing as the night was, Bali still had one more surprise for us. When we were out in the cacao fields trying chocolate, we came across Indonesia's most formidable snake, the king cobra. Oh my god, he's gorgeous! Dude, look at this guy. Ooh. Yeah, is it? The bullet, bullet. Oh! Yeah. Oh, someone shot him? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's fast. <laughs> so we're out here with the Bali Reptile Rescue, and I've got this King Cobra here that we've herped. Man, herping a King Cobra is a dream. And this guy's got such power and such intelligence. You can tell there's something going on behind those eyes. And this one. He's a younger, he's a younger one, uh, I would say about two, three years old. As you can see here on his back, he's been shot. Somebody shot at this guy. And man, these snakes are tough, because look at him. He is ready to go. After safely necking the snake, the team was able to remove the bullet from the air rifle. The fact that it was lodged in there and the snake was so active is a testament to how tough these covers really are. Afterward, it was time to release the snake and send him on his way. In the river? Oh, there he goes. Whoa, he's fast. Look how fast he is. Oh my gosh. Oh, he found a hole. That's amazing. <laughs> That is so cool! <laughs> so that cobra knew exactly where he was going. That was so fast and I had to run to keep up with him and he knew exactly where a safe hiding place was. So we re-released him out here and uh, he's gonna go back to business.